this nerve block follow-up care, I had to call my friend Diana that went to Orlando with me just to confirm some information about this. question was when coding continues uh, continuous nerve blocks and that's the listing for the different nerve blocks how do you code for the follow-up when the patient is sent home with the catheter and the follow-up is being done via telephone by the anesthesiologist now for one she in her uh, background she said she didn't think this was done very often but that doesn't mean obviously it happens because um, you know, someone wouldn't be asking this question. So for an answer, this is what uh, information she had given me. <laughs> she said it's all, it all depends. And this is what you need to know. And, okay, so there's not, um, <coughs> first of all, you don't have enough information given to just say, you know, if these nerve blocks are, are used, uh, you need to know why the nerve block was being given. Okay, and um, what you need to know is if there's a global period with the condition. So let's say someone had back surgery and they had, um, you know, spurs cut off of their spine and, you know, they more or less uh, slid them from, you know, C1 to, to L, you know, 5. And so um, there's a lot of pain involved, but they don't necessarily be, need to be in the hospital. They just need pain control. So uh, they give them a pain pump and they send them home. And so that's kind of what I'm thinking that this is. Now, on that surgery, if it's a major surgery, there's going to be a, a global period that goes along with that. Now, if it's not a major surgery and for whatever reason it's a pain control issue, maybe they have low back pain and they're trying this, you know, that's not going to have a global period with it. So you need to know what was the procedure that was done to the patient that uh, had them um, need this this uh, uh, catheter to be placed and, and the uh, pain to be taken care of. Now, that being said, now that you've got that information, let's say you do have a global period and that um, uh, you still need to check with the payer because now if it's in the global period, then you know you're not you're not going to get paid. And then if you call the payer and they're on Medicare, chances are Medicare doesn't pay for telephone uh, visits as far as I know and so you know you can't you can't use it so what you would do is you would just document that you know the anesthesiologist called and um, did a did a check on the patient and you can't turn it in if you can turn it in you still have to document it and you would use a telephone um, e and m and I think I have those listed at the bottom I don't, I'm not sure I think I did Oh, they go up, go back up. I thought I listed them. Oh, well, okay. It's through. It's a, I gave a range. Go down just a little bit. There it is. 99441 through 99443. Those are E&M codes for telephone um, uh, services. And so, you know, you could use one of those. But definitely check with the payer because most likely they're not going to pay for that. And... Um, uh, which it still has to be documented. You just aren't going to document it with a code. You're just going to document it. Get more CPC exam tips, coding certification training, and CEU credits. Go to www.codingcertification.org.